The spirit of a man will sustain him in sickness, but who can bear a broken spirit? A man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men. My name's Arthur and I thank you for joining me as we share together these two verses from Proverbs chapter 18, verses 14 and 16. Verse 14, the spirit of a man will sustain him in sickness, but who can bear a broken spirit? The New Testament declares that we are body, soul and spirit, and that coming to a relationship with God is to be born of the spirit. It provides a renewing of the spirit in a man. Otherwise, a person lives just for their body and for their feelings. But a total person has feelings, has a body, but also has a spirit. And our proverb says, The spirit of a man will sustain him in sickness, but who can bear a broken spirit? The distinction between soul and spirit is something that is not measurable in the laboratory. We can measure anything about the body because it's physically in front of us. We can measure the heart rate, the size, the weight, the strength, etc. But we are more than a body. When a person dies, the body is still there, but the person is not there. And sometimes the body gets sick. But in sickness, the body can recover. The biggest problems in Western society today seem to be spiritual problems. We call it mental illness. Basically, people cannot do the things that they need to do to live. These things can be aggravated by drugs, which mess up the thinking of a person. But there are many people who have not been caught up in drugs who do not cope with life. They get depressed, which can only be described as sickness of the spirit. And it becomes very wearing. And so the spirit of a man will sustain him in sickness. That is, if it is strong, if he looks to the future, if he has confidence that he will get through this. But who can bear a broken spirit? When a person has no hope, has no anticipation, I understand many clinical trials have been conducted concerning those who pray and those who trust in God in the presence of sickness. And the general conclusion is that a faith in God, a hope in God, does have a positive association with the outcome of the sickness. After you take all the medical conditions to account, the actual spirit of a man does have an effect. What a person believes, what a person hopes, is positive. And therefore, we often encourage people to look to the future, look to things improving, because their outlook will sustain them. Their outlook will get them through the difficulties of the present time. We all face difficulties. All kinds of things happen to all kinds of people. And believers in God are not excused or exempted from any particular kind of sickness or weakness or event in their lives. All kinds of things happen to all kinds of people. But faith in God does affect the way that you deal with these things, how you get through them, how quickly you get through them. But when you have no hope, when your spirit is broken, when your determination to pull through is broken, then people want the best for you, but they get absolutely frustrated. So I have a daughter who suffers in this way. She's so changeable and she's so frustrated because she cannot achieve things, which a normal person does without thinking. It's just part of the routine. But for her, normal things that we take for granted, she cannot do. And to my knowledge, it's not because she's taken some strange drugs. The only drugs she's taking are, are the prescribed ones from the mental health treatment that she receives. The spirit of a man will sustain him in sickness, 
But who can bear a broken spirit? Well, who can mend a broken spirit? It is God who is the great healer. And to have faith in God, to be born again by the Spirit of God, is the solution that the New Testament offers. We were dead in trespasses and in sins. We have no hope in this world. But in God, we do have hope. The second proverb I want to look at today is a man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men. Each of us has gifts, has abilities that are special and unique to us and we can use them for ourselves or we can use them for the good of others. So in the New Testament there are several passages which says to each is given a gift for the common good. The point is that our gift, whatever it is, is to be used for the good of others. And a person who has a gift, has something to give, will ultimately be acknowledged when he gives it. A man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men. So people observe what you do and they acknowledge what you do. David was just a shepherd. Nothing remarkable about that. Many shepherds in Israel in those days. But he was skilled on the harp. And people noticed. And when it was decided to bring a musician into King Saul's court, David was selected because of his skill on the harp. And we have the acknowledgement before men. And God also observes. And after the judgment, each man will be rewarded according to what he has done, whether good or evil. So what are we doing with the gifts and abilities and the resources that we have? Are we investing them in heaven to make room for us? As Jesus said, if your treasure is on earth, that's where your heart is, and this earth will be destroyed. Or you can invest your treasure in heaven where moth does not destroy, where rust does not corrode, and where the thief can't get at it either. A man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men. In times of great need, the question can be asked, what do you have? There were over 5,000 people gathered around Jesus. It was late in the afternoon, and the disciples saying, send them away. They need to go and get some food. And Jesus said, what do you have? They rummaged around and found a boy with five barley loaves and two small fish. What are they among so many? But Jesus said, bring them. And so the whole crowd was fed because the boy gave what he had. We can't give what we don't have. And so We can't beat ourselves up because we don't have a large amount of money to give to this cause or that cause. But we can do something. And we should do what we can. A man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men. I guess the greatest gift, though, is the Lord Jesus who gave his life as a ransom for men. And Because he gave his life, many people have invited him into their hearts. His gift has made room for him in the hearts of many. And our gift in return will bring us before God. One of the classic statements of Jesus is, It is better to give than to receive. And so the idea is, there are those who do not give, who run short. But there are those who do give, who have all they need. We can view ourselves as a vessel just accumulating things, or as a pipe transmitting things. But the water that goes through a pipe is much greater than the water that sits in a bucket. A man's gift makes room for him, and brings him before great men. The spirit of a man will sustain him in sickness. But who can bear a broken spirit?